Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with the practice questions for the day, a quick gentle reminder. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS has already launched its official Telegram channel. If you've not yet joined the channel, please do join so that you get all the current affairs related updates. Let's get started and look into the first question. The Asia Pacific Employment and Social Outlook 2022 report was released by International Labour Organization, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, World Economic Forum, World Bank. The answer to this is International Labour Organization. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the International Labour Organization and the report released by it called as the Asia Pacific Employment and Social Outlook 2022. According to this report, what exactly is happening? Because of the COVID-19, there were large scale discrepancies. Large number of people were removed from their jobs. They do not have enough source of revenue to get the livelihood means and mechanisms. As a result, we are trying to recover, but massive numbers number of people are yet not recovered from the COVID-19 shockwave. We also have the IT sector. The IT sector has been able to provide large number of jobs. But when it comes to the IT sector, it is the men who have more number of jobs in comparison to the women. So there is changing composition of the sectoral employment that favors the men over the women, says this report. The report also revealed that while IT and information services are region's fastest growing sector, in terms of employment growth, only 9.4 million persons worked in the sector in 2021, corresponding to just 0.5% of total employment. By contrast, the three largest sectors in terms of employment in the Asia-Pacific region, agriculture, forestry and fishing, manufacturing and wholesale and retail trade, together accounted for 1.1 billion workers in 2021 or 60% of the region's 1.9 billion workforces, the report observed. These are some of the important data. However, a larger elaboration of this issue will be discussed as part of the CNA. So kindly tune in to our CNA as well. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements with respect to Monetary Policy Committee. Governor of the Reserve Bank of India is the chairperson of MPC. The MPC determines the policy repo rate required to achieve the inflation target. The decision of the Monetary Policy Committee shall be binding on the bank and the quorum for the meeting of MPC is three members. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is 1 and 2 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to the Monetary Policy Committee. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, yes, it is right. The Governor of the Reserve Bank of India is the chairperson of MPC. First statement is right. Second statement is also right. The MPC determines the policy repo rate required to achieve the inflation target. But the third statement is factually correct but wrong as well. The decision of the Monetary Policy Committee, yes, it shall be binding on all the banks in India. But the quorum is not three, but instead it is four. If you look into the Monetary Policy Committee, Section 45 ZB of the amended RBA Act 1934 provides for an empowered six-member Monetary Policy Committee. This can be very important from the examination point of view. So it is a six-member Monetary Policy Committee it was constituted by the central government. The first MPC was constituted in September 2016. The MPC determines the policy repo rate. It is required to meet at least four times in a year. The quorum for the meeting is not three, but instead it is four. Each member of the MPC have one vote. And in the event of equality of votes, the governor has a second or a casting vote. So he has much more power in comparison to the other members. Each member of the Monetary Policy Committee writes a statement specifying the reasons for voting in favor or against the proposed resolution. These are some of the important facts with respect to the Monetary Policy Committee. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements. The World Bank defines the extreme poor as those living on less than $1.90 a day. The extreme poverty line is based on 2017 purchasing power parity. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is two only. 
why have we taken this practice question because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference of the World Bank extreme poverty what is this extreme poverty when we speak about extreme poverty this can also be attested as deep poverty adject poverty absolute poverty destitution or penury where people do not have even enough amount of money so that they can make a living out of it so extreme poverty basically means that a minimal amount of money is required for an individual to sustain his life but if this person does not get minimum amount of money for his daily sustenance that is what is called as extreme poverty when it comes to the world bank it defines the extreme power as those living on less than 1.90 this was correct earlier but then now it has been changed currently it is about 2.15 dollar and it is not 1.90 so remember in september 2022 we had a change and the change was it was 1.90 prior to that but right now it is 2.15 per person per day so the first statement is wrong when you look into the second statement the extreme poverty line yes it is based on 2017 purchasing power parity so basically when we speak about extreme poverty it is that particular condition where they would not be able to get basic human needs like food safe drinking water sanitation facilities health education so on and so forth now let's look into the next practice question which country is not among the five largest spenders in military expenditure in 2021 china india russia france the answer to this is france why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to cypri and those countries which have massive spending when it comes to the defense expenditure first let us take a look at which are the countries in the top 5 when we speak about the top 5 countries in terms of the defense and the military expenditure starting what we have is united states of america so the first country that we have is united states of america followed by china and india we have united kingdom but it is not france so remember france is not among the top 5 spenders when it comes to defense expenditure but instead what we have is united kingdom followed by russia this can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view what is cipri it happens to be an independent international institute dedicated to research into conflict armaments arms control and disarmament It was established on the basis of a decision by the Swedish Parliament and receives a substantial part of its funding in the form of an annual grant from the Swedish. Established in 1966, CIPRI provides data analysis and recommendations based on open sources to policymakers, researchers, media, and the interested public. The five large spenders in 2021 were United States, China, India, United Kingdom, and Russia together, accounting 62 percent of. the expenditure so remember it is france which is not included in this group but what we have is united kingdom now let's look into the next practice question which of the following is not a bird golden mahasir indian night jar spoonbill white ibis the answer to this is golden mahasir this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2022 so when we speak about mahasir this is nothing but a tiger so mahi is fish share is tiger so this is referred as tiger among the fishes this happens to be known as one of the toughest fishes when it comes to the fresh water so the golden mahasir lives in the fast moving waters inhabits the hill streams with rocky and stony substrate and they can be found in temperatures where the water temperature is between 5 degree to 25 degree centigrade the golden mahasir inhabits the himalayan foothills indus ganga and brahmaputra basins is it present in the southern part of india please put it on the comment section now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion is redevelopment of dharavi where is dharavi it is located in mumbai and now the adani group has won the bid for the long delayed dharavi development project which aims to transform the huge slum cluster 
as of now when you look at Dharavi it happens to be one of the densest slums in the Asia Pacific region and this particular region is also known for number of unorganized industries let's say for example manufacturing medicines leather footwear clothes so on and so forth and this is close by to one of the important richest business districts called as the Banda Kurla complex where commercial office premiums are among the highest in the country what is happening right now when you consider this particular slum prawl it is about 2.8 square kilometer it is home to number of informal leather and pottery industry it employs more than 1 lakh people now the state government has decided that this has to be transformed with modern amenities with much better urban infrastructure so this particular region has more than 60,000 people including slum dwellers and those with commercial establishments as well now this will be reformed there will be new urban infrastructure and this bid for transformation of the slum is now won by Adani so what has the state decided the state has decided that there are two components into this one happens to be the free component the other is for the developer what is this free component let's say for example there are people in this particular area these people who were present in this region before Jan 1st 2000 they will be provided housing so basically the state will provide 300 square feet houses free to the residents with proof that their slum structure was in existence before Jan 1st 2000 so for all those people who had their houses or the slum structure before Jan 1st 2000 they would be provided free houses but for the rest of them they would be provided settlement in this particular region for a price so if there are people who have lived in this part before 2000 if they are able to provide the documents they would be provided free housing but if they have settled after 2000 this would be provided at a cost so one of the component happens to be the rehab component the second happens to be the sale component what is the sale component since it is the Adani group which is developing it they are also investing a lot of money as well so the developer is expected to recover the cost of developing the overall project by selling few parts in this particular area according to the officials in the next 17 years over 10 million square feet will be constructed at a cost of about 20,000 crore of this 2 to 3 million square feet is meant for sale in the open market while the rest is for the rehabilitation of the slum dwellers so remember some is for the rehabilitation some is for the sale because of the development of the projects but there are concerns with respect to this project as well what is the concern there are local residents and small businesses they are worried why are they worried one because they'll be pushed out of this particular region some are worried that they would not be provided the rehabilitation some are worried that they will be pushed to other regions as well so their major concern is that they will be moved out of the Ravi and they also feel that there is no proper roadmap for the rehabilitation consent of them that is the parties affected by this particular project is not taken into picture consent was not taken and ultimately rehabilitation may not occur is what is their apprehension it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article so that's it for today thank you for watching all the best